can you please tell me why do we need this if statement if inside the if is what i will call it as a nested so whatever the value that you are taking so suppose if this condition is true the value which is in the true block will get assigned to this variable so this is the place where you can pass your parameter Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session. In today's session, I have taken a topic that is going to be the decision making and branching. Whenever I say decision making and branching, what comes to your mind? Yes, of course, all of you have studied this in a previous year, in the previous programming languages. The first thing which comes to your mind is all about the if statements. Yes, your guess is right. So in today's session, I will be discussing the different if statements along with the different if statements. I will also discuss the concept of switch statement. And the last topic which I'm going to discuss is all about the conditional operator. Without wasting much of your time, let me get into the session. So guys, the first statement that I have here is a simple if statement. Whenever I come to the concept of if statement, so please remember, I will have four different types of if statement in that the first one is simple if statement. The second one is if else statement. The third one is else if ladder. The last one is nested if statement. So the first one that we have here is a simple if statement. First of all, my question to all of you, those who are watching the video. So for you guys, can you please tell me why do we need this if statement? Sir, what question are you asking? If I know that concept, will I watch your video? Yes. Okay, some of you will tell me like this, but jokes apart. My dear students, just imagine I have written 100 lines of program. Okay, one program in that I have written 100 lines. Is it mandatory for me to execute all the 100 lines? No. I need a particular part of the code or a particular part of my program should get executed based on some condition. What is the meaning of it? I have uh, three different types of cloth. What is that? Formal wear, a casual wear and the night wear. So when I'm going to the college, will I wear the night dress? No. When I'm sleeping, will I wear the formals? No. When I'm going out with my you know, family members, Will I wear the formals? No. So I will be wearing, since I have all these three dress, three different types of dress, I will not wear whenever I want. I will choose this dress based on some condition, based on the occasion. That's what you need to keep it in your mind. So then how do I choose this? So first, let's understand. Suppose if I'm going to the college, so what type of dress should I wear? So formals. If I'm going to the college, observe if I'm going to the college. This is the condition. Are you going to the college? Yes, you're going to the college. The type of dress that you have to wear is formals. If you're going to the bed, so the type of dress that you you should wear is night dress. If you're going out, the type of dress that you should wear is casuals. So now you need to observe if is a condition I'm checking. If this condition is satisfied, if the condition is true, what is the condition? I'm going to the college, that is a condition. If that is the case, I should do whatever I have. That's, that's the simple thing that you need to remember. Okay, in the same way, even in the programming language also, I will be executing some set of conditions or some set of lines. Imagine I have some 10 lines here. When will I execute this 10 lines? If this if is a keyword, okay, this if is a keyword or the reserve word or the preserve word which is predefined word whatever you want you can call it but it's it's a reserve word so now i will open the parenthesis and now i will mention my condition whatever the condition that you want to mention you can mention within the bracket so fine i have mentioned the if is a keyword so inside that i have given the condition if this condition is true so i will open the bracket and i will close the bracket within this bracket whatever you want to write your code you can write so you can also write one simple program itself if not a simple program whatever you want any program anything you can write within this brackets that is what you need to have a clear idea why am i stressing on that is because most of the people they'll just print high or they'll just print you know i'm printing this if block 
so no that is not not for that reason we are having this block anything you write within the brackets that will get executed only if this condition is true first thing that you need to understand here is this condition will give me only two values that is true or false that's what you need to remember okay so this is what we call it as a simple if that is what i have uh, represented with the help of now flow chart so guys i have my condition this is a rhombus if the condition is true this code will be executed otherwise it will start executing the next set of code suppose after this also i have written some set of programs or set of lines of programs so if this condition is not true i will skip this part and i will start executing this line that is what you need to remember with respect to the simple if right so but here i have a problem sir you said if this condition is true then i will execute this but you have not mentioned if the condition is false what should i do so for that i have the next type of if statement that is if else moving forward to the next one that i have if else observe here so what is that i have here i have the condition that is a boolean expression is what why are you calling it as a boolean expression sir because it gives me the boolean value that is 0 or 1 okay true or false that's what you need to remember okay i can also mention it as a condition if this condition is true so my dear student whatever i have within this brackets anything any line of code so that will get executed suppose if this condition is false then i will skip this part i will not execute this part at all i will come to the else part and whatever the statements that i have mentioned inside the else part that will get executed that's what you need to remember at this point of time with respect to the second type of if statement this is the second type of if statement is what you need to remember right so fine sir we understood simple if we understood second type of if that is what is that if else third one what is the third one that we have before that let's check let's take a quick look with respect to the flow chart so guys what happens here this is a condition that i have so if the condition is true i will execute this part suppose if the condition is false i will execute this part after that so i will start executing the rest of the code whatever i have that's what you need to remember all right so fine that's what you need to remember the next part that i have here is can you guess what type of if so this is what the third type of if statement that we have that's going to be the if else when do we use this if else any idea so can you just guess my dear students so there in the if or in the if else how many conditions i was checking i was checking only one condition please come back and check here how many conditions i was checking i have only one condition here suppose i have the situation where i need to check for multiple conditions so what type of if statement should i use so in that case you have to use the next type of if statement that's going to be the if else so how do i do it can you give me some example to remember this concept suppose i'll give the first condition if day is equal to is equal to monday if the day is equal to is equal to monday wear white dress so this is the first condition that you are checking so fine next condition observe here i have given else if what is that i have given else if again this is a keyword there i was just using else okay here i have else if if this condition whatever you are checking if this is not that you are trying to check you are going for the next condition so if day is equal to is equal to tuesday if day is equal to is equal to wednesday if day is equal to is equal to so on n number of conditions you can give but remember at last i will have else block why do i have the else block if all this condition is true so i will execute this else block how many else block i will have sir in the if else if statement obviously i will have only one false block that is what i will call it as a else block suppose observe how exactly it is working let me just show you so guys what happens here is suppose if this condition is true if the first condition is true whatever the statements that i have here this will get executed 
So rest of this else if statements will be skipped. So then what about else block? Can you please tell me? Yes, even this else block will also get skipped. So the entire thing will be skipped. Only this statement will be executed if the first condition is true. Suppose if the second condition is true, I will skip this and I will skip rest everything except second block. Suppose if third one is true, I will skip everything except third block. Suppose all these things are false. I will not execute all these things. At last, I will execute only else. Rest everything I will skip. This is the beauty of if statements. That's what you need to remember. All right. Moving forward to the next one. Before that, I have uh, the flow chart. So, guys, you have the expression that is condition. So, that's what they have uh, given here. So, what is that you have? If the first expression is true, first block will be executed. Second expression, second block. Lastly, if no match or if any of the statements are not executed in the if else if, lastly else block will be executed. So that's what you need to remember with this, with this diagram. So let me not waste much of your time since all of you know all these things, you know, you have studied too many number of times. That's why I'm not spending more time on this. Right, moving forward to the next one. Nested if, the last uh, if statement. Nested if in the sense what? If inside the if is what I will call it as a nested if. That's what you need to remember with respect to the nested if. So guys, I have the if statement. Again, I have the if statement inside the if statement. So that is what I will call it as a nested if. The beauty of this nested if is like this. Say for example, I need to take the class. Okay. If I want to take the class, first of all, student should be there. So first I will check the condition student is equal to is equal to present okay this is the first condition that i will check then i will check one more condition do i have class okay so or uh, i will check working day the second condition is equal to is equal to working day yes if this is yes only then i will take the class so now I need to check the first condition. What happens if this condition is not true? I will not come inside at all. So what is the condition that I have? Student should be present. Student is equal to is equal to absent. Then why will I check whether it is working day or not? Students only not there. Okay. So I will not come to this part at all. Suppose imagine student is equal to is equal to present. So fine. Then again, I will check one more condition. Working day. So working is equal to is equal to yes. So only then I will take class. Suppose students have come, if it, is, if it is not a working day, then I will not take the class. Like that, you need to remember with respect to the nested if. So condition inside the condition is what I will call it as a nested if. Moving forward to the next topic that I have. So the next one is all about switch statement. My dear students, it's very simple to understand. So you have to listen to me carefully. So first of all, I will be using a keyword called switch. I'll be using a keyword called switch. So it is exactly working like a switch. So you have 10 switches, you have 10 lights. So at a time you will turn on one switch, right? So fine. So you will turn on one switch. So at that time, if you turn on the switch number one, the light which is connected to switch number one will be on. So that's what you need to remember in the same way this is also working so fine what happens here is here i have expression i can pass the parameter inside this expression so that's what you need to remember i can pass the number or i can pass the character say for example i will uh, assign 10 okay i will assign 10 a is equal to 10 so what i can write here is or I can just write, so A is equal to 1. So I can just pass 1. So this is the place where you can pass your parameter. So why are we passing the parameter? Just wait for me. I will explain this. As of now, you just have to understand switch is a keyword which you use to start defining the switch case. And then here is a place you will pass the parameter so fine once i come after this flower bracket so i will have different cases i will have different cases so you need to observe this word so this word is a keyword case 
So case is a keyword which I use. So in front of this case, I can specify my constant expression. For example, imagine I have a switch case program. So how do I write this? So I will just write like this switch. Okay. A. So then after that, so case one colon observe, you have to end the expression with colon. This is very, very important. So inside this case, so you have statements, anything, whatever you want, you can write. You can also write your own program here. So when will I execute this case? When I pass my parameter as one. So whatever the expression that you are passing, so this expression should match this expression. So when the expression matches, that case will be executed. That is what you need to remember. At the end of the case, I will have the statement that is break. So what happens with this break statement? So observe here. So all the cases will have the break statement. So why do we have this break statement? Once I'm done with the execution of this case, I will come out of this switch case. That is what you need to remember. Sir, is it mandatory that I have to give the break statement for all the cases? No. So that's what you need to remember. So you need to understand the purpose of break. So it will stop the execution here itself and it will come out of the block. That's what you need to remember. So fine. That's what you need to remember with respect to this. So sir, how many cases can I have? So you can have n number of cases. There is no limitation. So first thing that you need to remember is you have to use the keyword switch. Then you will be able to passing the parameter here. That is the options. Then after that, so you have to mention the keyword that is case followed by the expression. And that statement should end with the colon. So this is where you should never forget. After that, whatever you want to write a program, you write a program. No issues. Anything, whatever you feel like executing, so you can write it here. At the end of the case, you have to mention the break statement. Like this, n number of cases you can have. But at the end, it is very important to have the default case. If any of this case is not executed, at last default case will be executed. That is what you need to remember. At the end, I will close the flat bracket. This is how my switch case is working. Moving forward to the next one uh, that I have, that's a flowchart of switch case. I will pass the expression. It's very simple. If the case one, okay, so if the expression is matching with the expression that I have with the case one, so the code block with the case one will be executed. So only that part, rest everything will be skipped. Suppose if my case 2 is matching with the expression, only that case 2 will be executed, rest everything is skipped. If my case is 3, only the case 3 will be executed. So suppose if any of these cases is not matching, I will execute the default. That's what you need to remember at this point of time. So guys, moving forward to the next one that is conditional operator. So this is very, very beautiful. Imagine I have x is equal to so guys, A is greater than B and I'm using the conditional operator A colon B. So if this is the statement, how exactly this is working? So this is what I will call it as a conditional operator. I'm just checking whether A is greater than B. So A is 10 and B is 2. What is the value that I have with respect to the A? So A is 10. Can I call A is greater than B? Yes, can I say that? Yes, you can say this, sir. So fine, if this statement is true, so this is what I will call as a true block. This is what I will call it as a false block. Whatever you mention, so I've taken A and B. So that doesn't mean that you have to take A and B. Whatever you want, you can take it. This is what I will call it as a true block. This is what I will call it as a false block. So whatever the value that you are taking, so suppose if this condition is true, the value which is in the true block will get assigned to this variable. Suppose if this condition is false, the value which is in the false block will get assigned to the variable. This is how the conditional operator is working for all of us. All right, this is what you need to remember with respect to the conditional operator. With this, I've come to an end of this session. Hope you have learned the concept which you have already studied in C and C++ and Java quickly without wasting much of your time. So I've given you the revision. So the programs I will be discussing in the class. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.